Hello and welcome back to another video and in this one we'll be looking at this fantastic uh, boombox. It's a Sharp GF6060 produced between 1980 and 1982. This model's a 6060E. I found the model for the 6060H online. They looked virtually identical. Maybe there's sometimes it can be a slight difference in appearance. Sometimes one can have a slight feature change. They look the same to me. Um, and as you can see, this is a, a large boombox, uh, really of that 80s period with the radio, uh, different channels, um, all in one, so not, not separate speakers like some of them did, cassette player in the middle, and it goes really loud as well. So um, what I've done with this one, I've uh, cleaned it all up, I've replaced the belts inside, and I've done the function testing, and I'm gonna take you through that on camera now. So I'll start off with just a condition report, so I'll show you around, show you where the scratches and damage and things are. I'll, I'll highlight a few of the buttons and features. Then we'll pop in this tape. I thought uh, the Great Sits of 1985 would be suitable for this video because of the era. Um, and yeah, we'll have a, uh, a, a listen to the radio uh, and we'll have a listen to the tape cassettes. So let's start off with the body. As you can see, it's, it's a large, heavy unit, especially when you've got the batteries in and I'll come to the batteries shortly. Um, some scratching here on the, on the front as, as you'd expect in that large, uh, area and when you get this kind of faux metallic finish to things you're also going to get uh, wear over time so as you can see there's these as I bring it in there um, I've, I've cleaned it up as best as I can but things like marks like this and scratches from use um, are always going to be there as we have a look at the top again you've got this kind of uh, slight wear to the finish on the metal here and as you can see on here again to the to the knobs you just get that wear and the same to the aerial so it's basically just showing it showing its age and 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 its use um on the bottom i'll also show there is where was it you can see just down there that we know that it had a hard life being used at hasland hall school so um they basically must have had this for many a year probably for doing sport or uh, I don't know, Christmas assemblies or something like that, or play the morning assembly music. But it's coming to my hands and hopefully it's going to go on to a, a loving new owner. Uh, con continuing with the condition as we look around the sides, nothing too much to really mention on the rear, just a couple of scratches. Inside the battery bay there was a little bit of, of rust, didn't really look like corrosion. I've cleaned that up as best as possible. There's a couple of remnants in. And then the only other thing to really mention is the there's a bit of damage there just to the, the front housing. Doesn't seem to affect anything that I've uh, experienced um, during my testing. So let's have a look at some of the features. Uh, try not to double tap too much by talking through them and then showing them. So I'll, I'll be as quick, quick as possible. So you've got your cassette deck with a, with a, a counter. On the top, you have your volume, balance, tone, uh, all your normal cassette stuff. But this has actually got a few clever things. It's got this cut and it's got this APSS for a pro auto program search. It'll do as uh, normal or uh, uh, chrome tapes, radio or tape, stereo or mono, and a variety of different radio bands. So FM, uh, short wave, medium wave, and long wave. On the side, there is a uh, tuning knob. It suggests that the middle one is used for shortwave only, but having had it apart to fix it, I, that actually doesn't move anything inside. So I don't know if that was a bit of a porcupine. Uh, and then on the rear, we have uh, the option for uh, external mics, uh, beat control, one, two, three, and amp output. And on this side here, as you can see, we have um, a microphone, uh, and then a different type of speaker out on headphones. Down here, you've got DC, and then you've got the kind of uh, kettle attachment. So I've tested it on batteries as our, as our demo. I've tested this. I haven't tested this. I haven't tested any of these. I haven't tested any of the extra stuff. So basically, I've tested what most people would want this for, which is playing the radio or a tape cassette on battery or on power. Um, and, and that's exactly what I've checked. So let's move on to the features. What I'll do is I'll demonstrate um, the tape cassette first, and then we'll move on to the radio. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because um, I can show it on batteries first, but I find that um, because of it, it's trying to find a signal with the radio, it actually uh, picks up a signal, especially on kind of the short wave, better when it's being supplied with external power than relying on the, the smaller voltage of the, of the uh, 
of the batteries. So uh, we'll take a, a tape cassette and pop it in. It's got this really, really violent, I don't think I've ever come across a, a tape door that's, uh, that's as violent as that. Um, as it says on there, just highlight. There's loads of like nice little features with this. So this also program search will come on to full automatic stop. So when it reaches the end of the tape, it will stop uh, the counter there. As I've mentioned, I've cleaned it all out um, and changed all the belts. So that that was the counter belt, and then it has a large flat drive belt and another one built in. So one of the things you can do when you put the tape in is you uh, when you're on batteries is you can turn the volume all the way down, and when you press play. These, these initial lights that you see coming on that are just above the battery there, that's to indicate whether this first one just down here indicates whether there's there's battery or not. And if and if it's a low battery, that, that won't illuminate. Couldn't find any information right on this end one and whether that illuminates or not, but that's that feature. So now we'll turn up the volume and I'll, I'll kind of cut in and out so I don't get a copyright strike. So you can hear that and that that is just literally hardly turned and then mind your speakers so as you can see it goes re really loud um, I'll stop and flip it over and then I'll show you just uh, I'll, I'll move the balance left and right So you can hear that and I'll also show the tone. So really nice loud clear sound and then what I'll quickly just show you is your normal function. So you've got the play there, I haven't tested record either I'll admit that. Um, so you've got your fast forward so it zooms away, rewind, zooms away. But what it's got is this is two really clever things. One, you can hold down on the top, the cut and the fast forward, um, uh, either when it's playing or when it's not. So rather than me fast forwarding like this, pressing stop and pressing play, you can just go like this and hold the two together. And then when you release, it will, it, it, you'll then, it, it, you know, you stop that and then you just press play and same for a wind, cut and rewind. It will also let you do it when it's playing. So it'll kind of like go, so play here. And then I can do this and straight back in. So if you just wanted to just rewind, re rewind quickly, but not do all the rigmarole, you can simply do that. So that's really nice. You've got that kind of high speed uh, uh, queuing, uh, fast forward and rewinding. Now, the next thing I want to show you is this um, uh, auto program uh, um, search system. And in fact, before I do that, you should see when, when I'm playing here, you can actually see the lights responding, which at the bottom it says sound level mixer. So it shows you all those lights working as well, which is great. So. What the next feature it has is you can use this. Um, so basically, as long as the tape cassette has been made with a three second pause in the middle, um, or a home cassette has been made with a gap in the middle, you can use this to kind of fast forward or rewind to where it finds that gap. So at the end of a song, AKA the beginning of another one. Um, now, I think I did it once and it actually stopped in the right place, but there's another way to do it, which is watching the sound so right, if you watch here, as I rewind, nothing really shows on there. And if I fast forward, nothing really shows on there. But the mechanism we're going to use in a second, you'll see the volume as it's as it's fast forwarding and rewinding. And then when it hits a gap, the lights will, will vanish right down as it finds it. And at that point, you can stop and you know it's at the start or the end of a track. So the way we do this is rather than using the cue and forward is we use the uh, play button and rewind or the play button and fast forward. So. I'll bring it in now and I'll do play. So you want to you want to make sure you've everything stopped. Do play and fast forward together so like this. And you'll see here, see how that suddenly jumped to being on and I'll, I'll see if it auto does it or not. If it And here the light comes on. So see how it's searching. Oh, we, I think we missed it then. Do you see it dip? It went, it went silent there. So we missed a track already. So wait for the next one. 
that oh so that's the end of the tape so we'll do play rewind and at least that will demonstrate that way so it, it's seeing the track we'll wait for that to vanish there it, it, i swear that was about to stop before i did it and then if we press play see there's no sound at all and then the tr and then the, and then the track comes in so that's a really cool way of finding the big uh, what a great song as well by the way so that's a really cool way of finding the uh, the beginning or the end it'll either stop automatically or you you can kind of just keep half an hour on this and you'll see the uh, the sound uh, drop even though you're not hearing the sound uh, and as you can see everything's been working on there so that's all the tape cassette features which I think are really good and you've seen it on battery I'll demonstrate that we we can get the radio coming in uh, on batteries as well so all, all I'm going to do is flip it up to the uh, radio function I'm in uh, uh, FM uh, the, I'll put the radio the, uh, air, the uh, aerial up you don't really need it for FM if I'm honest but um, so I'll pop this onto radio and that is hardly turned that's like a tiny bit so you can imagine mind your speakers that we had with Jelani Blackman it was a real good one tonight nice to see him and catch up and you'll note here the stereo is is illuminated I can pop that into mono the mono will go and we'll be in mono instead and it comes from this guy and again as you're tuning you're getting that stereo signal come in now and obviously you just the tape doubles as the power now as i mentioned um like for instance when i go into shortwave and i did some searching it didn't see it, the uh, it doesn't seem to pick up as well because you're you know especially i'm in i'm in my garage at the minute to try to get that signal so also to demonstrate that i won't bother taking out the batteries but you'll there'll be a difference because it will it will move to this instead so if i'm in shortwave and and you're only hearing that and then I pop the power in. There, see how it just got louder? That's because it's now got getting more power. And we'll search on shortwave. Can hear something come in there and actually i was wrong the middle button does actually does actually minor tune it which inside it didn't look like it did anything so i'm surprised by that um so anyway you can hear i'll see if i can find anything else so there we go i picked up like french before i think i, I even picked up some, somewhere more um in the far east so that's all working one thing i haven't been able to pick up so far is, is medium or long way so i'm getting i'm getting a lot of static So I'm getting a lot of static, but not really picking up a signal. That's on medium wave and then long wave. So that's not to say it doesn't work, but I have not picked up uh, medium or long wave on it. Uh, and I'll just pop that back to, to tape. So in summary, this was a sharp gf6060 i'd call it a boom box because of its form factor you know it's it's large two big speakers oh it's also got things like a, an integrated microphone there and stuff like that uh you've got um it plays the cassettes really well nice and quick forward and backwards you've got that that uh, ability to to kind of chop forwards and backwards just by releasing that and you've also got that ability to search for the beginning and end of the track both of which are really nice the uh the counter working absolutely fine you've seen the, the volume the left the right uh, in addition to that you've got the radio where it picks up the fm really well and it also picks up shortwave and then the things i haven't and, and it works on batteries and power and the things i haven't tried are all those 
kind of extra stuff, the other op DC options, the other speaker options and things like that. And if you've kind of had a look over the condition. Now, if you like older electronics like this, I've actually got, an, uh, I think I've got another sharp boom box that I need to restore, another boom box, can't remember the model, and then a number of smaller radios. Um, I might start filming the work as I do it on them, just to see if they, those go down well with the people who um, watch my channel, as well as the kind of after work. Um, but if you did enjoy this video, please like, share, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. And until the next one, all the best. Take care and see you.